Charles Henry Cannell was a British writer writing under many different pen names, the most famous of which is E. C. Vivian. Born in 1882 in Beddingham in Norfolk, he served in the Boer War and was a journalist on the Daily Telegraph. In 1913, he married Marion Christmas Harvey, with whom he had one daughter named Catherine. After leaving the Telegraph, he worked as an editor on the aviation journal Flying between 1917 and 1918. Thereafter, he proceeded to work as editor on early British pulp magazines, including the novel magazine, Hutchinson's Adventure Story magazine, and Hutchinson's Mystery Story magazine. He wrote crime fiction, oriental fantasies, and lost race stories under pseudonyms such as Jackman and Sidney Bingdom. He died in London in 1947. Maker of Shadows, published as by Jack Mann, came out originally in 1938. It is actually the fifth Geese mystery novel chronologically, but only makes one passing reference to a previous case and doesn't require one to have read any of the previous novels. The series initially started as a regular mystery story, with Geese's first case having Geese trying to foil communists which is an interesting premise given that it came out all the way in 1936, so it was a good 15 years ahead of its time. Maker of Shadows was put on Carl Edward Wagner's list of best horror novels, and for once I think the title is justified. Unlike with The Cadaver of Gideon Wick and The Deadly Percheron, which were more straightforward mystery stories with some weirdness or some unusual turns of the plot thrown in. The novel begins with a Rolf Bentley making its way through the Highlands, carrying inside it one Gregory George Gordon Green, known as Geese for short. He is a private investigator of the more unusual variety, tackling everything from mumps to murder according to his own newspaper advertisement and he is at present obeying an invitation to come visit a certain old lady he had never heard from before, named Margaret Aylener, at her residence called the Rovens. The residence is thus named after the four Roven trees planted in a square around the house since time immemorial to ward off evil, and this, in turn, is represented by the very reason Geese had been summoned by Mrs. Aylener in the first place. Gamel MacMorn, a local laird of no great importance, his ancestors came to Britain when the Aryans overran Europe and drove the Azilian Tardinois in front of them. Gamel MacMorn, the direct descendant of priests and kings of the line of MacMorn, is said to hold the ancient wisdom of his people and make use of it even in the modern age. He would have been a king, for his ancestors near on established a Pictish realm, but Adrian's Wall and the invasion of the Iverni from Ireland put an end to their ambition. He is in fact still considered a king among the Dawain Sith, or the Men of Peace, meaning the Fairy Folk. Among others, he has the ability to trap and conjure up shadows and use them to be his servants. Now MacMorn has his sights set on the young Helen Aylener, upon whom he uses his evil influence, all for the sake of a horrible rite he means to perform amid the ring of stones about his dwelling, each stone of which was sanctified by the sacrifice of a dozen lives to grant it more power. Geese experiences some of that power when returning to London, as he is beset upon and nearly driven off the road by a supernal swarm of flies sent his way by MacMorn, he now has to find a way to stop the source of MacMorn's power, attempt to free Helen, and hopefully come out of it alive. This is a very good book, and though it begins somewhat in the style of a crime novel, the focus on the supernatural is always foremost. There is no poo-pooing of the concept by a cynical protagonist for two-thirds of the book until a final revelation happens to open their eyes. Nor are the things that happen ever explained away by any kind of natural means. Of course, the author annoys one at times with his highlighting of Christian civilization as virtuous, 
and anything pre-Christian as evil. At one point he calls Nineveh one of the most evil cities on earth in its time, but if you can ignore that, it is definitely a good read with an appropriately creepy atmosphere.